Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge. Hello my friends and welcome to another video. This is my kind of anti-recommendations video, but you know what? I find that even when you talk about books you don't like, someone might decide that they want to read it. So there's that. Um, I also don't do much negativity on my channel. I mean, I do talk about every book that I read, but if I don't like a book, I, for the most part, you know, I won't say never because I do get really wound up about some things and rant about it, but for the most part, I would much rather talk about the books positively that I liked rather than ones I don't. But because we're coming to the end of the year and it's time for those like wrap up videos and everything, we of course have to do the books that didn't work so well for me. So we are going to be talking about all of the books that I DNF'd or gave one to two stars, um, which I actually didn't give any books one star this year. I only had some DNFs and two stars, so it is is what it is. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I am going to be opening a Try Treats box. I received one from the company to open here. This video isn't necessarily sponsored by them, but they did send me a discount code for this, so if you like what you see in here, you can order a box for yourself. So let us get into this. Just one more qualification for this as well, um, or explanation. Some of these that I didn't like, I didn't really bother to remember what they are about. Like I have enough uh, wonderful books to remember that I don't, you know, I don't remember the names of the people in these. I don't remember any of that. So this is more going to be just me kind of listing. And if there are like some specific things popping out, I'll point them out. Otherwise, I don't plan for this video to be too long and drawn out. Um, there's a couple that I have some pretty specific gripes on, but uh, the rest of them, not so bad. So we start this year out with um, the ABCs of Love collection, okay? So I'll be honest, um, this was a read-along slash like book club type thing I was doing with my friend Jackie from First Lady Reads and I adore Jackie and so when she asked me to do this um ABCs of Love was the series done by 26 different authors and each author had a different letter and then they wrote a book you know with A, B, C, D like that. So I didn't end up having a great time with these books and really neither did Jackie. There was a couple that were okay but there wasn't really any that did much for me. But what it did do for me is give me a lot of rage. So I only put two of these books on this list, but really, not really any of them made an impression on me at all. I won't be recommending any of those books to you guys. And though I only read books from two authors that I knew previously, um, I just was not a fan of what was being done. I felt like either the authors used it as an opportunity to put a book from a series they already had going into it, or I felt like they just didn't put a ton of effort into this because it was like, oh, we wanted to be a part of this, but uh, we still have other books to write. So I don't know. It just was a fail for me on a lot of levels. So the first book off I ended up DNFing, which was Amore by Kimberly Knight. And this one, I can specifically tell you why I didn't like this one, and it was because of the way it was written, which is hardly ever an issue for me, you know? I read a lot of fan fiction, I read a lot of books by, you know, inexperienced or new authors, and I tend not to mind, jeez, I tend not to mind if, you know, tenses are a little weird or things aren't exactly perfect, but the way that this one was written in it was so distracting that I couldn't even get, I couldn't even get past the first like 20% of this one because it was just so weird. So yeah, I bowed out of this one pretty quickly and it was just written in a tense that I couldn't handle. Now I might as well talk about the other one that was part of this series. So then another one in the series that I DNF'd, I was actually really sad to DNF because this was one of the authors I was actually looking forward to. I have read this author before and I have liked some of her stuff. Um, and so when I read Quintessentially the One by Aletha Romig, I was pretty excited to read it. This was going to be a small town, second chance romance. But what I didn't know is that it was a secret baby. <laughs> 
and it was the kind of secret baby that boils my blood more than anything because it was like it's a friend they had like they had been friends with benefits for a while he was home for I think his grandpa's funeral because he was going to school in another town and they had kind of met up a few times when he was but whatever and they got pregnant the night of his grandpa's funeral and then she never told him she just assumed he wouldn't want to have to stick around for the kid but like she thinks he was a good guy she actually works with his grandmother um and the grandmother knew but agreed not to ever tell her grandson so now we are a few years in the future the kid is you know been around a while and the grandmother's died and she tries to set it up so that her grandson will come back and maybe this girl will finally tell him that the kid is his. And I can't tell you guys the deep internal rage that I get in a secret baby like this. I stand by it. I will die on that hill. I need a better reason than you don't think he'll want a kid. Because that is, in my opinion, the most selfish and cruel real world thing that a woman can do to a man is like, it's one thing if you tell him and he's like, no, I don't want anything to do with it. And you're like, okay, staying out of it. Or he is a drug dealer or a mafia boss or abuser. Like any of those reasons I can get on board with. I'd be like, woman, you protect your child. But this was your friend. You're close with his family you think he's a good guy and you just don't want to inconvenience him with a kid and not even giving him a choice I find an absolutely unforgivable sin okay I'm putting it out there again when there's nothing wrong with him he's never had you there's so what he wanted his life well so did you you know he at least deserves to know if he wants to change his life to include his child but she took all that choice away and also forbid his grandmother from telling him and one of the things I was telling Jackie when we had our live show on this one is I was like the audacity of his grandma to just go along with that and the grandmother is supposed to be this loving grandma like my grandma would never keep that secret from me I mean obviously I'd be the one having the baby but if I had a child and my grandmother knew, she would never keep that a secret from me. And so I'm like, how are you buying that this woman is a good woman and deserves this man and that this grandmother was a loving woman? So anyway, I told you some of these I would have more to rant about than others, but that was one that I was personally offended by it. I've brought this up multiple times. I had a secret baby situation happen in my family. My family was never the same after it happened. Um, it took you know 25 years for that hurt to like work its way out like it's it's awful especially when there's just no reason but you think it would inconvenience them you know anyway so that one like the you know, writing was fine I liked what it was and then I didn't know this was a secret baby until it happened and then I was like fuck no goodbye so don't like that but some people like secret baby and they like the angst of it. I'm okay with surprise baby and I'm okay with secret babies where there is either like a one night stand where you don't know the person's name. Let's say they're a famous person and they and they had to lie about their name and then you don't see them. Or again, they are a mafia man or a killer or something. Those are all acceptable reasons for a secret baby for me. Just because you don't think he wants a kid is the worst Please. Okay, moving on. Okay, another one I DNF'd pretty early on. So this one was actually part of my 12 recs from 12 friends. I have two of them in this one that are from that, and I feel really sad about it. But Sweet Mercy by K.A. Tucker was picked. Um, you know, I have read the Wolf Hotel series by K.A. Tucker. I don't know if I'll still like that series. There is another book coming out in that series this week and I'm really nervous about it but I'm gonna read it but I like that series so I was willing to give Sweet Mercy a try and it has the kind of hero that makes me throw up in my mouth a little bit he tries to blackmail her into um, fucking him so that her father who's in prison will have an easier go of it and I know this is supposed to be kind of like a dark romance but he was just so sleazy right off the top that I had no desire to continue and see how it's gonna work out so I didn't even get too far into this one. I only got into like their first interaction where he's asking to fuck her and like threatening her father's safety if she doesn't. And I was like, nah, nah, I'm sure I'd be okay with a scenario like this at some time, but not today. 
A Crown of Ivy and Glass by Claire Legrand. So I actually had an arc of this one. It was a really thick, chunky fantasy. Um, I'd read some other, uh, or I had never read another one by her, but Claire Legrand, Claire Legrand had done kind of like a new adult slash YA fantasy romance series. And I had never really gotten around to reading that one, but there was arcs available for this one. There was actually an audio arc available for this one, um, along with the, you know, E arc. And I just, I read over 50% of this one and I normally do not DNF that far in. Usually I know pretty soon, but, and I was interested in this one because it had this thing where like the heroine actually has like a chronic illness and the hero in this story his magical power is like he can basically ease her chronic illness but she knows that it could make her dependent on him and he could have control over her by being able to ease her pain and so they agree to work together to solve kind of this magical mystery that's going on but she tells him he's only ever allowed to heal her when she like asks him to or like ease her pain when she asks him to and there's like magic and I don't know. I just, I wasn't connecting with these characters by the time we were 50% in. I just wasn't connected to anything. So there wasn't necessarily anything wrong with this one. Um, but I also haven't seen a lot of my friends go head over heels for this series either. So, you know, in the way that I have seen it happen with other series. So I don't feel like I'm too far off by not being head over heels for this one. Okay, The Italian Obsession by N.J. Adele. This one was another viewer recommendation. And uh, this one I DNF pretty quickly because it's supposed to be a taboo age gap. And I think that it's like uh, best friend's dad or something. Either way, it had a really big age gap. And I'm okay with that. But he starts being attracted to her when she's like 15. And he's just waiting around for her to be old enough. And again, I've read some taboo age gaps, like I can get with it, but it was the fact of like that he was waiting around for her to be old enough and just waiting for the time that he could swoop in and like, you know, be her hero and uh, like fuck her once she was old enough that just his mindset about it is what creeped me out. Like I really like a man to be very like resistant to it until he can't resist anymore and then like gives in and this guy was just like just waiting I'm just waiting for her and so I didn't get very far into this one at all his headspace made me feel like he was a predator so I DNF'd and then the last one that was a DNF in here is Stalking His Claim by Kai Brightly this is an MM romance and I thought that this was going to be a fun spicy time and I won't deny it definitely would be spicy um, this one is an office romance. It's actually like in the political realm and the one hero works in the governor's office and the other one, he's the like, um, vice governor, whatever it's called, he's second in command. Um, and he wants to, the one hero wants to elevate himself within the mayor, mayoral office. And so he offers to fuck the vice mayor or whatever. And the vice mayor agrees cause he's like, oh, this power hungry, um, guy, I'm gonna fuck him and I'll be happy to do him some favors, but he has a very specific kink and this is a, he has a breeding kink, but more so than a breeding kink, he actually has a belly kink. So he wants to believe that he is breeding this person and then wants him to wear a belly so he can feel like he made a baby with him. So basically an M-preg fantasy, like it's fantasy. And you know what? I don't kink shame a single person in here. This was a very, you know, interesting kink, but I just didn't like it. It didn't vibe for me, um, which doesn't surprise me because I don't enjoy M-preg. Like I don't, I don't like reading that. So reading the fantasy of it didn't necessarily do anything. All right, um, then there was The Harlot by Saskia Walker. This one, so the rest of these I'm talking about, I gave them all two stars, just so you know. I didn't have any one star, like I said. If it was on its way to being a one star, I usually DNF it. I don't enjoy giving a book one star, so there we go. Um, the Harlot is a uh, historical romance. I read this during the uh, romance readathon that happened in August, and this one is about a witch actually 
I'm a Scottish witch and the hero rescues her from being like burned at the stake in the beginning um, with the promise that she helps him with some undercover work he needs her to do. Um, and to do this undercover work, he needs her to learn some some sexual uh, pleasing techniques because the person he wants to get info from is into those kinks. So that happens. Now, this one just had a lot of fucking going on and I never felt the romance between them. Um, and then when it was time to like do the deceiving, it all happened like extremely quickly. And so I just didn't, I didn't feel anything for these characters by the end. So I bounced out of it. Heart of, a Re Heart of the Reaper by Y.D. Lamar. This one was like a paranormal slash like horror fantasy book with is a grim reaper and this girl who has lived through absolutely horrible things. Um, and once she like dies, she can belong to the reaper, I guess. Or maybe he, you know, I can't even remember the full setup of this. You know what? Like I said, I don't care to remember all of it. What the reason why this was two stars though, whatever the plot was, is I know that the male love interest who is the reaper, he watches her suffer through all the things she suffers through in the real world, watches her be abused by her. I think she's being molested by her father and like her mother blames her for the father being attracted to her. Um, and so there's this, this horrible abuse happening and the reaper just like watches it and just waits for it to like spill over. And I'm like, okay, that might be, maybe he's not allowed to interfere. Maybe that's what's supposed to be the thing. But I hated that. I absolutely hated seeing it happen. And it made me not like the male love interest because he wasn't stepping in to help. Like, I don't know. I want a hero, even if they're like a villain, right? Even if they're a villain, I want them to do the like heroic thing and rescue their love interest from it and make those people suffer who are doing that to her. And it just wasn't enough for me. And it was also lots of body horror and like icky things in here. So didn't enjoy. Choosing the, Her Alpha by Isa Wellen. This was another one that was a um, 12 Rex from 12 Friends. This one was an Omegaverse. And I have a tough time with Omegaverse. There are some that work for me. Like I recently read a Dramione fanfic that was Omegaverse that worked for me, but it's a fine line for me when it works. This one is in kind of like a sci-fi fantasy, like futuristic place. Our heroine is a Omega and her mother is dying and her mother's husband. So her stepfather at this point is going to make her be his once the mother is dead. The mother is like dying as it is. And so she wants to make a run for it. And so she actually makes a run for it to someone that was her father's enemy because her father had said that he was like the most powerful man in the area. And so she wants to get there and throw herself on his mercy to ask for help. Um, of course, she gets there like almost just in time for her to be going into her first heat. Um, and so this man ends up being her alpha and is going to pair her together. And uh, I don't know, it was just icky. Again, I felt icky. I felt icky for parts of this. Like the first time she has her heat, um, the other like women in the guy's harem, they like trick her into having to sit through him fucking all of them, which again, that's a part of the thing. He has a harem so that he can fuck his, all his, his aggression out on his harem of women. And they like trick her to being in the room and it ends up pushing her into her first heat, her being around an alpha who's like in rut with these women. And she's like too young to go through it. And so it really is hurtful to her. So I don't like when all the other women in a story are bitches. And that's literally what these women were, is they were bitches who wanted to torture her because she was the pretty new thing who is completely terrified and doesn't know what's happening, you know? So I didn't care for it. The Intern by Marnie Mann. This one was such a letdown. I actually had an audio arc of this one and I had um, a physical copy was like gifted to me. And I was really excited to try this because Marnie Mann has been one of the authors that like blew up this year. She actually has tons of books in her backlist, but you know, it's one of those authors that like really blew up um, for her spiciness. And Honestly, when I look back through the year, this is one of the books that was really starting to turn me where I wanted more out of spice this year. You know, that's been a conversation that I've had with multiple of my friends. And this was one of the realizations I had like on my own, like without talking with other friends about it, because this book was absolutely smut all the way through. And the hero was so awful. And this was in a contemporary. 
And like the heroine is an intern, but it's like for her family's own company. And so she gets made an intern to the one law, like law guy who isn't her relative, right? So that she can have experience under someone else. And they had almost had or did have a one night stand, like, of course, before they meet. So it's one of those where like they had this sexy hookup before and then you come to the office and, oh my God, it's the guy I'm going to be an intern under. Um, and the way that he treats her because he starts being really mean to her to push her away because he's super attracted to her. So of course he's got to be a jackass to like push her away from him so that she doesn't fall in love with him. Um, but the way that he treats her and degrades her in a law office that's run by her family members, I just found completely unbelievable because no matter what she wanted to put up with she could literally tell her parents this man is sexually harassing me or degrading me and the dude would have been out on his ass so quickly and I don't know it's like she's trying to suffer through it to prove she can handle it and I'm like you're being sexually harassed you're being mistreated because he finds you attractive and wants you to quit so that he and but it's like it's her family's law office she's not gonna quit anyway is it law? It might just be business. It might not be law. I don't even remember. I think it was a law office, but I finished this one because I had that arc of it, but I wrote a super scathing review. I was like, I cannot, I cannot. Normally I round books up if it's an arc, but I was like, fuck no. This had nothing redeemable to me. He was an absolute jackass and he's a jackass. And even once then he decides that he loves her, he still tries to like push her away by being cruel, but yet they have sex in every chapter of that book. So it's like, it isn't even like a sexual kink where like enjoy degradation. Like he is cruel to her because he wants to fuck her. And I'm just like, no bitch. Why are you putting up with this? Like why? He's not that hot. Why are you putting up with it? So that one got me feisty. Dirty Wicked Prince by Eden O'Neill. This one was actually a patron picked it for me. Um, and I didn't hate this one. I didn't hate it. However, it's the first in like a trilogy of like new adult boarding school romance. And it had like bully aspects in it. And I just had no desire when it was over to like continue the series. Um, and it was one of those that like it has a ridiculous cliffhanger to it. Like there's a big reveal right at the end of this one. And I was like, I'm not continuing this. Not for one fucking second am I continuing it. Um, and so that one was... Uh, loss for me but I hope my patron was entertained by some of the notes that I left because because I knew it was for my patron I try it never to be like cruel when I'm leaving the notes because they've picked one of their favorite books for me but I also tell people you know if you pick a book like that like I'm gonna be honest in my notes right I'm not gonna like fib about how I feel about it and that one I tried to be funny with it is where I tried to go because I was just like okay this is getting ridiculous you know all right. And then the last one I want to mention is this one was pretty recent and I did a really long rant about this one, so I won't do it right now. Um, but this one is Black World um, Within the Dark Fae Universe by Quinn Blackbird. And I talk in that video that I wasn't supposed to read this one. So this one was a viewer recommendation, but they were recommending the first book in the series. They were recommending the first book in the series. Now, Dark World in the Black in the or Black World in the Dark Fae universe is about like is a spin-off book. Um, and so it wasn't the original one this person was recommending to me, which thank God. Because this one, I don't feel like this. I ended up reading like there was a duet in this, and I ended up reading both. I didn't feel like this had an HEA at the end because the heroine is kind of forced to still be with the hero. And he's happy because he's with his love, but she doesn't want to be there. So it didn't really feel like an HEA by the end because he doesn't fully respect her and she isn't happy to be there. So yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> it was an awkward situation. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. I tried to get through these pretty quickly. Look at that lighting. Oh, I just freaking hate it. Let me fix, well, we'll just leave it for this video. It's okay. I know you guys don't mind, but like the lighting I was about. So anyway, I don't know if any of those books will sound good to you after I ranted about them. And I'm probably not going to leave links to them down below because I don't endorse any of these. But if any of these were books you love, I deeply apologize, kind of, but also those are my opinions. 
they're not the end all be all by any means. So please don't feel hurt that I despise them, even if they're the ones you recommended, because there are books that I love with my whole heart and soul that people want to burn them with fire. So it's totally fine. Now we're going to switch into this little unboxing. So try treats. If you don't know, they do um, like international snacks and I've gotten a few boxes from them before. Again, they're not like a sponsor. They're not like paying me to do this, but they do send me the box for free. And then down below there will be um, the coupon, which is the book refuge, and you'll get 15% off your first box with them. So what they do is each month there is a different, um, there's a different country that is picked. So this month, let me hold it up. Um, and then they send you different snacks from there, which I mean, it's so fun. So this year or this month, it is Poland. And look at all these goodies. I um, don't always like, I'm not always interested in everything that's in these, but I've been bringing them when I go see my, my nieces and they've been loving it. So this one, um, they also send you like a recipe. It has some facts about Poland. So yeah. So then they have a sheet that has what all of it is on there. So what I've done when I do these unboxings, which I like, so I'll continue, is I'll show you all the snacks that are in it. Then I will pick three of them to try on camera and then I'll rate them by how it is. So if any of you watching are from Poland, I bet I have one or two out there at least. Tell me if any of these are your favorites. So let's go. All right. This one, these are called Dropsy. I will not be able to pronounce these. So these ones are round spheres with a milky taste that melts in your mouth. These spheres consist of thin, crispy outer shell with a creamy center. Oh, that sounds good. My lighting is going to make this difficult. We'll turn it down a little bit and just deal with the side there. All right. Oh, I'm so excited because there is a lot of chocolate in this one and I'm excited about it. Okay. This one is a Paulique, Paulique, and this one is a candy bar that has an outer layer of chocolate with an inner layer of creamy filling. The chocolate and cream complement each other wonderfully. This looks amazing. There's also a Prince Polo, which is four layers of chocolate, uh, four layers of wafer coated in chocolate. So yeah, a wafer snack there. There is boxes, which I mean, I ain't mad about. Okay, there's a BB Biscuits. These ones are individually crunchy and sweet. Um, they're good with tea. It's a little tea biscuit. A Princessa Longa. Wow, this one is huge. What is this? From Nestle. Oh, I didn't get a pink one. They show a pink one on this. This is a pineapple coconut milk cream. This chocolate bar is unique texture and taste. Ooh, feel like it's wafers. There is this one, which I'm not even going to attempt. This one is uh, milk wafers by Gaplana. And this is uh, crispy thin wafers with creamy filling. Lots of wafers are, I'm sensing a theme. Okay, this one is Chawala. Ooh, this looks pretty. This one says it is chocolate bar. An exquisite chocolate bar offers classic indulgent chocolate experience. So this one feels like a solid, ooh, feels milky. I might try that one. Clowns, it just says clown. Um, this one is a confection with their peanut treats that I think are coated in chocolate, maybe. Seems like a good choice. And this says it's a hazelnut bar. Looks like more wafers here. 
um, combination that is nutty and sweet. Oh, okay, I found this one at the bottom. This one is the Chowlwa. <laughs> this one is uh, has sesame paste or nut butters and sunflower seed butters. So interesting. So there were two of these in here that I think are like from another box. Maybe they were bonuses in here because yeah, these both have um, like Asian writing on them. So I'm thinking they were bonus. But okay, lots of chocolates to choose from here. Let's see what we pick. I want to try this chocolate bar. Let's try this one. Ooh, comes, it looks like that. Ooh. Oh man. It has like, oh, this smells so good. Oh my gosh. It's so creamy. All right, let's also try these, which it says it has a candy shell with a creamy inside. Mmm. Kind of a chalky texture. Feels kind of like it's malted milk or something. And then I'm going to try the Nestle Princess. Uh, so another wafer candy. Let me see. Okay, so out of these three, this is definitely my favorite. This is so indulgent and so good. Then I think it would be this one and then these. These I didn't actually care for too much. So anyway, there you go. And if you would like to get your own box and experience some of these fun candies and surprises, go ahead and check out the link down below and use the code THEBOOKREFUGE for some off your first box. So the lighting is getting away from me, but thank you so much for watching this video. It means so much to me. And uh, we'll see you next time for some books that I loved. <laughs>